please subscribe like and share today we'll talk about headers we'll touch bases on some of the things that uh, is really pertinent information or good information because I have noticed that people are saying try why headers are better than four into one so forth and so on but nobody really gets to the nitty-gritty why what is the the, dy the dynamics behind uh, that comment he just don't say oh the try why has better mid-range than the four into one but why is that and then when you really ask could you explain to me the the things that go on on the flow pattern on the header that makes that better on the mid-range or better on the top end most will give you a blank stare because they rehash what they hear but perhaps many don't understand what's really going on so I'll try to clear that up anyway so uh, anyway, and also let me uh, please uh, subscribe like and share and also I've been getting a lot of calls from overseas as well as here in North America <clears throat> also down to South America um, I have my information up above there uh, on my telephone number and how to get in touch with me by text first then uh, <clears throat> there are of course fees included and uh, if somebody wants a very personal um, advice on which way to go with their combination or just a confirmation and uh, I'm available so uh, the number is up here and please look it up and let me know if you're interested and in, in, uh, in the session goes from half an hour to an hour or maybe more depending okay so here we go let's start with the header you're looking at this header system and this is what you call the shorty headers the factory looks similar to this except the flanges are crimped up really really bad and not only that the pipe is a little bit this is an inch and three quarter here and they are a little bit smaller I think they're probably I don't know probably one and a half not really what you call a true header in the sense of the word but here you are you're looking at a BBK unequal header shorty header because they cut right here instead of all the way down to the collector and there's an equal length now the equal length header has a little bit more power than the shorty standard shorty header the reasoning being a lot of people have said hey you know this this turn here and this other turn it just creates a lot more bends and turns and everything and this one's more direct okay and there's not much turn or bends on the outset this one looks better no doubt here there's a lot of somersault and turning and gyrating going on but the truth is that it's a little bit more um, well should we say a little bit more complicated than that out here in the collector what you want to do is the equal length purpose is that when every cylinder fires whichever uh, firing order the sequence is an equal length header will have the same distance or they try to so that it dumps into the collector right here same thing here okay so what they're trying to do is have them come in and the same length and they're all come in at a sequence here this was very short that was very long so when they fire on their firing order sequence what happens is that this one gets into the collector before that there's a lot of turbulence going on here a lot of just oh my gosh confusion is what you call it just like on the top of a, a manifold you know when you look at a spacer a clear spacer you have a lot of stuff going on below the carburetor cylinder to cylinder cylinder to cylinder robbing here on an unequal length you got a lot of turbulence here because they all don't come in even if you do the firing sequence they don't come in at a set uh, sequence this one probably fires a little bit later on but gets there before that so far and so on 
not only that, there's a lot of cross contamination going on. Let's say one of the valves uh, exhausting, and one's at the end of this overlap phase, whichever one that might be. There's a tendency when they all pile up in here for that to short circuit and go the other way and cross contaminate the other cylinder, whichever one that might be. Could be this guy. I got to look at the firing sequence, but that is a distinct possibility. Whereas here on the long tube, whichever sequence it fires, the distance they has, have to travel ends up in a more regulated and more uniform pattern of every 90 degree firing sequence and they dump here at the collector in a more, uh, should I say, uh, a better non-turbulent or less turbulence than this one here. Okay, it's just like everybody coming into traffic instead of regulating everybody to go one after the other and, and blend into the freeway and keep going. But once everybody comes in, the other guy here comes in real fast and the other guy here is trying to accelerate. And you have a traffic jam. Gridlock. This is gridlock. But I'm not saying that it's no good. Still better than the factory. Because you still have some length and it's not crimped up. Whereas this, with the longer runner here and over here, even though they're towards the end, when you really stretch that, it's about the same. They try to get close. So on the 90 degree separation for every firing sequence, it will dump right there. On a more, be it 180 or 90 degrees from each other. They will dump on a more uniform pattern with less turbulence, unlike this one here. So I hope that is uh, a, uh, a good uh, food for thought and also, now, let me, there are some out there that has a sphere on the end of the collector. You've seen that. They charge you a little bit more money. Well, I kind of like don't agree with that. But like anything, at high speed, even though it's turbulent here, the sphere kind of like stabilizes everything coming out. All right. I can, I can agree with that. But when you have the pulse coming out all right and they dump out here they'll feel a little bit of back pressure on the end of every exhaust is there's a uh, a negative pressure when the the initial flow come out right behind it is a negative pressure tailing right behind the main uh, exhaust uh, flow what happens there when you have the sphere back here guess what it does it come down it comes back in and facilitates the backflow easier with the sphere on a shorty header I don't think that's smart now if you got top end um, uh, that's what you're trying to go after all the time sure it it'd probably work out good if you're a set RPM 6,000 5,500 but when you're part throttle that sphere facilitates the backflow easier to the other pipes whichever ha happens to be the no low pressure uh, pipe at that point in time it'll go back there easier but if it was blood like on the center part of it, it's blood when the exhaust all come out or four individual runners they come out and then they try to get back in as there's a blood uh, piece there towards the center that's what it hits and stops the reversion from coming back up and hopefully not contaminate the the intake mixture coming in from during the overlap especially this guy here the short guy here when it come back and turn around real quick and there's a sphere it's a straight shot you just gave it a ramp to go in there and contaminate the, the incoming fresher fuel mixture with spent exhaust gases definitely not good so sometimes when it doesn't have that it's really a plus okay there's always like i said nothing's for free there's always a uh, negative uh, part of the equation you get nothing for free there's always a pay up somewhere down the line
what we are looking at is a what you're looking at is a tri y header I think this is from Doug Tarley and they've always made well it's a general belief out there that these things are superior in the low mid-range spectrum and I believe that is exactly true a true statement they are superior in the low and mid-range uh, pull and horsepower pretty much but why is that superior when you look at all the other comments out there nobody really touched on why this is superior to a 4 to 1 or a shorty header now the reason I will try to explain now when you let's just take one of these guys here okay let's take number one let's say one fires exhaust valve opens up the air exhaust column comes out at a fast speed perhaps supersonic when it comes up it sees an expansion here this expansion automatically it fills up when flow sees an, a wide opening it loses velocity it slows down big time here because it has a big opening when it slows down the whole column slows down with it some proceed to go down but right behind that fast exiting gases is a low pressure area now this low pressure area probably reaches still here and then it wants to back up and the other ones stayed right behind and the second cylinder fires and pushes that column further down at the same time there is one that shoves right back up from the low pressure area and the pressure from here from the the slow gases that kind of like slowed everything down is reflected back up it starts to climb up when it climbs up at the last pass of the exhaust column when it came out like this there's raw fuel that ended up right there there's always raw fuel especially with a high overlap camshaft some of the intake gets pulled in by the exhaust and I said that on my previous video how strong the exhaust overlap pulls on the intake column when that exhaust valve is starting to close up and the piston is rapidly coming up there's some raw fuel that gets pulled exhaust valve opens up towards the end of its its uh, exhaust uh, a cycle the intake valve starts to open and yanks all that fuel into the chamber hopefully it goes under the exhaust valve into the chamber instead of out the exhaust pipe there's always a amount of fuel rough uh, intake air and with fuel mixed in coming out of this exhaust pipe so when the exhaust pulse comes out right behind it is an ever lengthening low pressure area it gets here it slow because it sees a big opening it slows down when it slows down big time okay some of that ex intake air column gets pulled towards the exhaust pipe all right when they get pulled by the low pressure front or depleting or uh, rapidly exiting low pressure column with the high pressure gases here this guy fires up when this cylinder fires up it hits that column that previously came out boom all right you guys see it it hits this area here and it creates added pressure but at the same time there's always an equal and opposite reaction every time you you blow something come right back you see that in the in the videotape of uh, of that uh, nuclear bomb out there in the Nevada desert where they're taking a picture of this barn or this house and then the a nuclear blast comes in boom it destroys the house it falls down this way and comes right back there's a backflow same thing with exhaust there's a backflow now when this fires 
either if they're separated by 90 degrees or 180 or right next to each other, there will be pressure here. So the gases that went in initially is supplemented by this guy that fires, boom, expands. Here's what happened. Remember that low pressure area here that came in as an effect of that rapidly exiting gases and the raw fuel right there that came out? It's all wasted, isn't it? But now when it starts to backflow because of the gases that it get to introduce it get pushed down and the other ones will try to come up because there's a low pressure area there's a high pressure area the 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 low pressure column will come up and guess what happens to that freshly exhausted air and fuel mixture right at the pulled out by the overlap this column comes in and shoves it back into the cylinder boom when it shoves it right back in there guess what you recovered some of your dynamic pressure instead of the exhaust valve closing and wasting this and this is the raw fuel you smell out there your exhaust pipe and you go wow that sure smells like fuel that's it this is the one now when this column fires comes back down pressure builds up some proceed to go down but there's still pressure and then the the absence of pressure, the low pressure area here wants to come up. This guy fires, adds more push, and it shoves fuel and air that just got drawn in to the exhaust pipe, shove it back into the cylinder or combustion chamber. That boosts your torque. Without this guy here, and I'll explain on the full length header what went on since this is and the same thing happens over here either if this guy gets first or this guy goes second so anyway as soon as that proceeds down another column comes out puts pressure and the reverse happens here this column reaches and this drawn out air and fuel fresh air and fuel there gets this signal here and gets shoved back in so basically you're exhausting, pressure builds up, shoves back that air fuel that got drawn in back to the thing, to the combustion chamber. And just, as soon as this fires up and this guy's closing his exhaust valve or about to close and the pressure builds up and it wants to, to run back. Actually, if you cut this header this short and this was a running engine, when you put your exhaust, your, your hand by the exhaust, it'll go like this, pop, 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 pop. It'll push your 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 hand out of the way and then suck it right back in you see that one lawnmower engine you put your your finger on the exhaust valve on the exhaust pipe you go like this pop, 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 pop. same thing here there's always a fast column of about supersonic air coming out here 600 750 miles an hour depends on the heat when it come out or temperature it come out right behind it is a low pressure column and this guy fires, gives pressure, builds added pressure here, and this guy here with the, the pressure here, and then the vacuum pulling back on it, shoves the pulled over air and fuel mixture. And it repeats the cycle here and here and here. Okay, you guys see it? And by the time this whole column comes down and gets drawn into this, collector if you ever call this two to one collector then it proceeds down downstream to atmosphere or through a header i mean through a muffler so this is the sequence that you have here all right these two combined but every time you have a bigger space it kind of like well it will decrease back pressure no doubt okay so there is the column this is what's happening that's why this one here shows superior low and mid-range because it's able to shove that inducted or exhausted fresh air and fuel mixture shove it back into the combustion chamber i will show you in the next example how that is close to impossible to do with long tube headers and we'll continue
Okay, now we have an SC1 cylinder head with full length headers on it. There's a whole different scenario with the um, tri y header. What you're looking at are equal length primary pipes. These are 2 inch with a 2 and an eighth step to 2 and a quarter on the last end. Now, what is important here? The equal length. Now, when the exhaust flows come out and run all the way down at a fast velocity, it ends up right here on this collector. And you notice there's a constriction here, unlike this kind of collector. Now, this constriction here, it has a little bit of a change there. And the change is in the approach angle to the collector, 8 degrees to 15 degree angle change right here. The reason for that is you want to keep the pressure recovery constant. Every time all four dumps into an area like this, when you constrict it, because when it sees a big opening, the flow slows down. And when you, what you want to do is you want to keep the pressure constant so it keeps flowing, keeps moving. All right, picks up speed right here. And any change in area, the pressure recovery will drop. Hence, flow will slow down. And you won't get the scavenging of such a header system. Look at this, for example, here. We'll, we'll use this because it's so obvious here. When the exhaust fires, the rapid column comes out. This is like a long rifle. Okay. When it flows out, right behind it is an increasing area of low pressure right behind it now when it dumps here it wants to turn around and pull back again remember the the fresh air and fuel that got pulled in by the overlap still there like the tri -Y. But this is such a long distance, works great at high RPM with multiple exhaust pulses constantly one after the other and they connect right here and then they start pulling each other or pushing each other and vent to atmosphere or to a, a headers, a muffler system. Now, since it's a longer distance, when the backflow, okay, the, the, what do I call that, the reflective wave wants to come right back up because this is a low pressure area. As soon as it comes out, it travels to the collector, you want to turn around and go back up. It's a long path. And guess what? The pulled over fresh air and fuel charge usually don't get shoved in. Because remember, the velocity on such a big pipe is a lot slower than the tri-Y. The tri-Y is so much faster. Go on out and back doesn't mean it's got more flow but the velocity is a smaller diameter so it's it's got a real fast velocity way past probably supersonic and when you have that issue what comes out it wants to shove right back in as a reaction for each and every action is an opposite and equal reaction or almost equal reaction same thing with exhaust but now here the velocity is slow slightly slower that's why when you coat it, you keep the heat in there. Or a 304 stainless retains the heat and they keep moving. Once it depletes down, let's say the low pressure areas are down here and wants to turn back up, it comes right back at such a long distance and it probably never gets there. It probably never gets there and shove that air and fuel column that got pulled in to the exhaust pipe. Whereas the tri y is so short with the secondary um, expansion chamber, if that's the right word, I don't even know what they would call that. It bounces back and the other reflected wave comes in and pushes it back 
That's why you get lots of low end torque. This one's gonna punish your, your low uh, mid-range or more mid-range, flat, flat tur. okay? So it's a longer distance, the reflected wave, exhaust pulse comes out, reflected wave or low pressure area wants to go back up, it's a long distance, it does not reintroduce the spent, I mean the newly inducted air and fuel back into the combustion chamber. Hence, you got a flatter mid-range. You got excellent top end, of course. The big pipe will allow a lot less back pressure. You don't need any back pressure. And I'll explain later on when you take off your muffler and everything and people say, oh, you lost, you lost back pressure. You never need any back pressure. You don't need back pressure to gain your power back. And I'll explain that here in the next uh, procedure here. Now, when that happens, all this column here comes in and proceed. And when you have that configuration, the pressure is constant, it keeps it moving. What you don't want is a sudden, like regular collector that are wide, like you can see the difference. See how this is big? When it dumps in to this, this is not bad, but it's not as efficient as this one. You're going to boost your mid-range and everything else, and top end. Because this will scavenge your cylinder out of exhaust gases much faster than here, or much more effectively. What happens here is it sees a massive increase in area where all the four pipes dump into a bigger area it loses pressure and when it loses pressure it slows down and velocity slows down as well this to the untrained eye oh this is no good it's it's thinner here it doesn't have the mass flow of this one well this got too much when you're talking about pressure recovery and everything this is a lot smarter and a more effective uh, design than this. This one just expands all four dumps into a big area, slows down. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now, let's talk about, whoops, let's talk about what's going on here. The tri y earlier that I showed was okay. Now, but that is not the ultimate tri y the NASCAR style tri-y or race car tri-y the, the joined pipes are downstream so you get the length of the 4 to 1 with the benefits of a 2 to 1 but they're downstream they come to together here where you have the the common pressure box or whatever you I don't even know what they call that area where the the twin cylinder, the one and three gets together and two and four get, gets together. Um, resonance chamber or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what they call it, but I don't see enough information why they work. But down below where they join together, you have the long, long and big diameter exhaust primary pipes which allows a lot of exhaust flow for high RPM power, but the common pressure chamber here, I guess that's the right word, pressure chamber here where one and three gets together, reflects off each other and pushes back and helps shove because it's a shorter to the pressure chamber here, it's shorter than here what it does is it's able to shove some of that pulled over intake and air from the combustion chamber back into the chamber. It reflects it back again because like here and here they come in together let's say to the pressure chamber here and one after the other they reflect of each other and continue to push down to the dual chamber to the main collector but the pressure that's reflected on each other helps shelf back the low pressure area and shove the pulled over intake 
air and fuel mixture back into the combustion chamber, hence boosting your mid-range. And the top end is still allowed or it's still good because you have the big pipes. So you get the best of both worlds. And from what I've seen, and I've run a tri y NASCAR style, I didn't lose anything. In fact, on my old 1990, um, my drag car back in 1990 that I ran the, I guess the big Grand Nationals, I had a tri y but I had long pipe. In fact, my mistake then was my exhaust was, my primary pipes was too long because I had to, to come in and come to my common uh, pressure chamber into the splitter and into the main collector and I think my primary length was way too long. I got gobs of mid-range I tell you uh, but I think it cost me power but that's what as far as I know then so here we are here's what you're looking at so the NASCAR tri -Y, it's not like the first one I showed it's too short here the pressure chambers over here and they split up to one common chamber which is their collector which is also merged so you're playing around with pressure recovery okay so uh, all that thing is uh, part of the dynamics of an exhaust system and there we are and uh, let us proceed again with the other uh, subject matter I hope some of that explanation uh, get cleared up and uh, better understanding why the tri y function better than um, a 4 into 1 on the street and eventually a tri y NASCAR style with the longer primary pipes is actually better than a 4 to 1 that's why you notice most NASCAR guys have the more advanced tri y header with the pressure recovery chamber down below downstream much further and is, in fact gives you the pulse um, response from the low pressure area to back up and shove the pulled over intake and air charge that went past the chamber into the exhaust and shoved it back in to the combustion chamber so your dynamic compression will go up in essence and so when the exhaust valve closes you just trapped it back in there will always be some kind of fuel recover fuel pull over to the exhaust exhaust pipes excuse me or exhaust ports and if there's a way that you can recover some of that column charge that got out and shove it back in try why does that at low and mid-range try why NASCAR style long primary pipes does that as well so really you look at your mid-range pull and the top end is basically the same there's not much difference between a 4 to 1 and a try why long tube header now what are the things that we do tricks of the trade there's probably some of the parts that you like now um, I for many years have been well I will share this with you guys because I don't want to just give the usual rehash and and same old same old like everybody else everybody flow test the head really when you look at the head you don't have to put on the flow bench most of this aftermarket cylinder head <laughs> are designed by good qualified people and the telling time is when you look at the size of the intake valve when you look at the intake valve one's 190 one's 194 the 194 will flow more and the others are 202 the street heads and the other ones are 208 210 212 215 the bigger the intake diameter more the flow simple as that I don't have to put it at this thing I feel stupid when I look at something with a 210 or 215 intake valve and I go I wonder if this 205 flows more than this of course it would <laughs> it's a bigger door <laughs> okay but anyway what are some of the things that I've been doing for many many years 
I would there's somebody out there that makes headers for me and he says as usual Ben give me your firing order he knows my uh, MO and every time I have him make me some headers I give him my firing order either I'm a 1-3 or a 1-5 why do I do that now even for a turbo I sequence my firing order to my header pipe okay so I give my fire and I look at this pipe, and it starts to snake around the pipe so that when they go into the merge collector or over here I mean on the merge collector they fire in a rotational basis I'm not dumping my primary pipes to the collector here 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 and then here no okay I sequence my firing order in a rotational sequence to my collector how much is that worth I have no idea that's the way I've been doing it since day one been doing that for 25 30 years but it's always worked for me one day I got to do that and see what the net effect would be so I know for a turbo if it's rotating this way and then you have and I've seen a lot of these guys uh, where was my okay and I see more than one where they put the shorty header either these or these instead of going this going to the back like that they have it this way to the turbo they reverse it have the turbo on front of the engine and they reverse this exhaust shorty why is that the closer the header is or the turbo turbo to the head you have more heat energy and a lot of velocity coming out your spool up time is faster so when you do this and then you sequence your header system turbos rotating this way and then you put your header dump and I did that when one of the cars that is in my page and that doggone thing with 15 pounds of boost we made 1650 at the back wheel this is 25 years ago maybe even more and I was dumping it in a sequential manner the owner didn't even know that because I was trying to keep my mouth shut and if the turbo is spinning and then you you introduce this exhaust column in that same rotational thing direction what are the chances of spool up time will get better in fact it would same thing on the sink when you pour the when you open the the drain thing and it's just going in whichever way it doesn't drain as fast but if you stir it up a little bit you see the sucker go shh, 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 and then the toilet or the uh, bathroom bowl will easily um, drain the water when you put a circular swirl in it now another trick is here for example if I'm tired of holding the long tube header right underneath here I put a pinhole okay what that does again we talk about some of the spent exhaust gases or some of the gases that exit out that was not completely burned when you introduce a little bit of air leak here and that exhaust comes out and sees fresh air guess what it'll do it'll light it up Boom. and when you bring up and lights it up it brings the temperature up scavenges itself 
faster. For you guys that weld or observe somebody welding, he's got their gases there, there on their torch, and when you add a little bit of air, what does it do? It shoots rapidly. It does the same thing. Okay? And now when you have a computer system on your car, I put a clamp on here. Clamp, clamp, clamp to cover the hole. And people are always wondering, how come Ben's got that doggone clamp right there? Close about an inch where it turns down. <laughs> and I, I, I really just don't answer. I just ignore it. Because that will tend to give you a lean reading. By the time you get your mixture, your air and fuel on the computer correct and everything, and your plugs are reading right, let that sucker go. Take off that, the clamps right here and uncover your hole. And in that regard, now you got it. You got to read lean, but no, no worry. You're reading the plug, it's still good, but at least because on some of these doggone headers, and I've seen more than once, where you have the slip on, uh, take apart just like the ones on my Yates head here. When you have a sensor on the collector there, any one of those slip on exhausts that has a little bit of air leak will show lean. And you're always going to wonder, why is one side of one back of my header is lean always on the other side? Well, perhaps more likely you have one of those slip to the collector leaking. So take note of that. So I do my header in sequence, firing sequence, and I put that hole in there. Okay, so, and then here we are. Uh, this happened to me not too long ago. A motorcycle engine. In fact, two of them called me up. Uh, remember what I said about the header system? How I told everybody to shoot paint here on the primary pipe? I, I spoke to two motorcycle guys not that long ago, not even a week ago. And one of them decided to cut his header pipe because he thinks it's too long. And the other guy did this routine paint, but he used crayon. And then when he put crayon, he said, midway all the way to the end. He noticed about an inch and a quarter, the crayon, it was a yellow crayon, and it burned it and right about an inch and a quarter before the collector slipped in, it changed color. And he goes, ha, huh, okay, that's what Ben was talking about. What did he do with his motorcycle? He chopped it about an inch and a quarter right there. Not very much, slipped it back in. Guess what happened? When he did that, he made a pass right off the bat, he goes, Holy sheesh, Ben, he calls me up. I picked up half a mile an hour. Oh, okay, you have, he goes, yeah, I thought it was a fluke. I ran again and I did three more passes and all of them were half a mile an hour, at least faster than my previous run from the other weekend. Same basic temperature, same density, no, no other changes. Cutting it made it even more better and I said to him since you did that could you explain to me what really happened there I said when you have your, your four pipes that came under his bike when they all came together and you had that inch and a quarter that it changed color when you chopped it up there and, and slip your collector at that point in time when it's going downstream Okay, what's actually doing is losing energy because it's starting to get cooler. It's hotter the flange, going out like gangbusters. 
while it's proceeding downstream, it's starting to cool down, loses its heat energy, starts to slow down, and guess what we talked about earlier? About that negative pressure behind this initial column? It wants to run back. Now, when you cut it right where it started losing its energy, the other proceeding is a four cylinder motorcycle, Japanese motorcycle. When it hits the collector, it was a merged collector, it wanted to turn back because of losing energy. But the other proceeding exhaust pulses pulled that sucker right in there, pulled it out. Because your previous combination, it didn't quite reach the collector, it turned right back in. And then the outgoing other exhaust pulses sees part of it and pulls it partially back to the collector and out to the atmosphere, run on the, he ran no muffler. What hap happened there is that when he dumped it, at that point in time that I cut it, he dumped it, the collector started to slow down, here comes the other pulses, he gets pulled right in there. Beautiful scenario. And I said, watch your carburetors or your fuel injection. It's a fuel injection, it's running rich, okay? So the carburetor one ran richer. So I said, what happened there was a signal. Your signal, like, like I said, that anytime you made that exhaust so much more efficient, the yanking pull of the exhaust column is exaggerated or increased big time. And you're drawing through the Venturi at a much higher depression than before and your mains couldn't, it's getting pulled big time. Hence your rich mixture. So you need to go two steps down or one step down in your main jet and watch your plug. He said, yeah, I pulled my plug, it looks darker than before. He pulled and pulled the plug after it. He, he leaned it out, it started colorizing correctly. And then he goes, wow, that works, wow. Just a hacksaw <laughs> and a crayons. He was high tech. All right. Some other people probably take that to the dyno and measure this. Ah, just put a spray paint or a crayon. Old school. It works. So you do that, and you'll find out that. Uh... So at the end of the day, he was almost a full mile an hour faster than before when he fixes. Fuel air field mixture, and he did that uh, cut on the collector. And then he said he's gonna try next is that little pinhole underneath the exhaust pipe where it dropped down. He's gonna take it to the to the top. I said, oh, you don't want to do that. Not only is it obvious to everybody else, but at the top side is the high pressure side. On the low side, where it bends down straight from the head, right here when it bends down. That's where you want to put it, so you draw it in, not force it out if it's on the outside. So what else? I think that's... Oh, now, uh, on that turbo car I did many years ago, like I said, I sequenced the firing order before it dumped into the turbo. But also, my primary pipe came in, it's not too big. Okay, the primary pipe wasn't big, considering it's a 427, uh, engine at first and I dropped it down to 385. I dropped the cubic and I took the stroke out of it. 385. But once it came out of the head flange, okay, here's the turbo. What I did was before I dumped it into the turbo, it got a little bit smaller. Now would that work on drag racing? Heaven knows, I never dynoed it. Oh I dynoed it before with the original header. Now, with, with this new s uh, sequence, and the primary pipe came out of the head flange, and before it dumped to the turbo, all four primary pipe got a little bit smaller diameter, speed it up, and then the, the firing sequence. So when I did that, it responded big time. Unfortunately, I don't even know where 
and got moved. I never heard from him again. I guess he lost his business or whatever, and that was the end of end of that whole thing. He couldn't probably afford his race car. He had the best of everything. So I did that. Coming up from the primary pipe, slight reduction before I joined all four and dumped to a sphere collector and dump to the turbo. I was trying to speed it up so that the, the turbo, that is even more effective on road race turbo cars. You have your primary pipe and then before it dumps to the turbo, slight decrease and goes to a collector. A merge type collector with a sphere. So it'll shove that sucker into the turbo, spinning it and makes a big, big responsive combinations. That's why sometimes it's not the big things that everybody that was those little things to detail that that you follow and you pay attention to. Slight decrease in the primary pipe on a turbo car with a firing sequence rotational on the collector with a sphere. Boom. Now you want to go, oh it's got bigger curb against the noise engine's just responding better. And it's got a better top end too. <laughs> okay? So Please uh, like, share, and subscribe to Ben Alameda Racing. And if you guys want to talk to me personally, I got my contact number here, uh, my 626 area code, and give me a call and uh, I can talk for whatever length of time you guys are willing to, to uh, uh, get information, valuable information. I hope it really helps everybody. Thank you very much. Take it easy, guys. I'll touch bases with everybody and keep in touch. Bye-bye.